Greetings, community. Happy, happy Monday. Happy Monday. True healing is done in the trenches. That's what we're going to talk about today. But happy Monday. Happy Monday. Jump on in. Greetings, greetings. Habaragani. Habaragani. And that simply means what's the news? Happy Kwanzaa. It is the first day of Kwanzaa, y'all. The first day of Kwanzaa and the first day is Umoja. And that means unity. So today is all about unity, y'all. So think about how you can incorporate unity in your life today. Reflect on that. So yes, happy Kwanzaa, happy Kwanzaa. It's a great day. It is Monday. And we are talking about true healing is done in the trenches. My name is Jamisia Monroe. I am the CEO and owner of Community Yoga. We'll be going live every day now until January 1st, which is, this is the last week, y'all. This is the last week of December. And then, that's it. We're going to get to it all month. We've been providing you with tools and self-development tips and mindset shifts tips and journal prompts so that you can self-reflect and self-develop and we are making the necessary changes right now y'all we're making the changes right now today is the it's not the first day of the fast but it's the second day but of the fast but first day of the actual full experience so yes so we are on the root chakra day Today is the root chakra day. It's all about the foundation, making sure that the foundation is set. The root chakra is associated on a physical level is associated with our adrenal glands. And on a conscious level, um, it's associated with our foundation, our family, our tribe, our friends. It's associated with security, stability, money. It's associated with being grounded within self and being grounded within your home, secure in your home and all of that good stuff. So, yes, we are on the root chakra day today. This is day one of the fast. So the topic of the day is true healing is done in the trenches. What do you mean by that, Jamesia? Well, we're fasting. And when you fast, you abstain from something. And here at Community Yoga, our fast is where we abstain from foods, eating solid foods. So this is a straight liquid fast. Fresh juices, herbal teas, and water. That is it. Nothing more. And when you abstain from something that your body is used to doing or used to eating, You'll begin to have these withdrawal symptoms, these hunger pains, these cravings. But you are building your spirit, you're strengthening your spirit within the process. And in that process, healing is done during this fasting process. Not only are you healing on a physical level, because your body is doing a factor or reset. That's kind of like, that's, I like to, ha like to explain it that way. When you're fasting, your body does a, a factory reset. Hello, y'all. Make sure that you type in the comments what you're grateful for. Oh, I jumped in. Let me uh, back up. I got excited. So today I am grateful for hot showers. I'm grateful for hot showers. Fun fact, I studied abroad in Ghana when I was in college for a summer, for the summer of 2013. And when I was studying abroad, we used to take bucket baths. So bucket baths was a thing. And, you know, of course, you know, that's different. It was uncomfortable. But eventually I've gotten used to it. But what I can say is that it made me appreciate the warm showers, the hot showers that I take. And I don't take it for granted. So today I am grateful for hot showers. Hot, hot showers. Type in the comments what you're grateful for. Please share. Gratitude is the best attitude, y'all. It's great to be in a state of gratitude because when you are grateful for what you have, 
then you open yourself up to receive more of it. So that's why we do gratitude here at Community Yoga. Hey, grateful for growth. Yes. Thank you. Growth. That's a very good one. That's a very, very good one. Growth can be uncomfortable. It can be painful too. But it's so necessary for our ev evolution as spiritual beings having a human experience. So today, true healing is done in the trenches. So I'll get back to that, back to the topic. True healing is done in the trenches because when you are abstaining from everything that you're used to doing, when you're abstaining from your habits, your, your normal habits, behaviors, you release all the distractions. Because we're so connected to the, the, the yes, exactly, give thanks, yes. Because we're so connected to our distractions, our vices, our vices distract us from ourselves. I mentioned this on another live before, but vices in the form of food, vices in the form of relationships, sex, drugs, alcohol, television, social media, um, clubs, you know, whatever you can think of that can be a distraction. I am grateful for being able to do the work needed. Yes, thank you so much for sharing. Gratitude, gratitude. Um, so all of those things that I just mentioned are distractions. And we tend to lean on these distractions to cope with everyday life, to cope with things that we haven't addressed from our trauma, that from the past, from traumatic experiences, from childhood. It's, it's a way for us to scapegoat reality. It's a way for us to scapegoat what's deep in our heart. But it's important for us to, to heal. Healing is necessary and important for, important for our growth, development, and evolution. So during the fasting process, healing is inevitable. Your body is healing. Your mind is healing. Your emotions are healing. And you are doing the necessary healing when you are fasting. So healing is done in the trenches. And when I, what did I mean by the trenches? When you're fasting and you have nothing to lean on, all of your shadows will come to the surface. And you have no choice but to face them face to face. And I, what I've realized about this world is we often run from our shadows. We're afraid of our shadows, so that's why we distract ourselves. Because it's uncomfortable to actually look at yourself. It's uncomfortable to address the pain that we've been suppressing for so long. It's so uncomfortable to address the trauma that happened to us in childhood or that happened to us in adulthood. All of that is uncomfortable. So we use these distractions to, to cope with that pain or that trauma that keeps seeping up and we're trying to push it down. And that is gonna keep seeping up until you address it. So when you're fasting, you have no choice but to address your shadows. You have no choice but to address your trauma. And we all have something that we are healing from. Everyone is healing from something, you know. Rather it be something, you know, astronomical or minute, we're all healing from something. So when you're in the trenches during this fast, those shadows come up, boy. Oh, do they come up? But the whole goal is to integrate your shadow and your light so that you can operate with both. But we live in an imbalance, you know, society where, you know, it's best for us to put our best foot forward and to only show our good side and the side that makes us favorable and digestible to people grateful for this live that addresses how to heal yes thank you thank you so much um so we live in that society where i'm gonna keep it 100 to me it feels like we have to play games in this world it's like you have to play the game like ugh, you know i'm just not a fan you know just keep it 100 you know just keep it 100 i'm not a fan of games i don't i don't like that i don't like that but we live in a society where you have to play games you have to play face you know, you have to put on and put your best foot forward. No, integrate both the shadow 
in the light aspects of who you are. That's where your true power lies. Your true power lies in you being your most true and authentic self, regardless what anyone says about you. I, I'm about to go on a tangent real quick because I need to get this off, you know. Be true to yourself. It does not matter what people say about you. They're always going to have something to say about you. Be true to who you are. Show up as yourself, as yourself in every room that you take up space in. If you, you want to come in and you, you feel powerful, you feel bold, you feel confident within yourself, show up as yourself like that. You know, if you're not feeling it, you know, be honest. I'm just not feeling it today, but I'm here and I, I showed up. We don't got to, we don't, don't, we live in a world where we have to play these games. I'm not a fan. I'm just not a fan, y'all. I'm not a fan. You know, you know, I vibrate my, like I do my best to vibrate at a high vibrational frequency because that's just my natural vibration, to be honest. So, you know, but that, I just want on a huge tangent, y'all. My bad. Let me get back on topic. <laughs> I just had to address that real quick because I'm just not the one to fake the funk. You know, I naturally have a high vibrational um, temperament. So that's why. But anywho. So back to the topic. True healing is done in the dark. But what I've learned is I've learned how to integrate my shadow and my light. But at one point in time, I used to neglect my shadow. I did not befriend my shadow. I used to be ashamed of my shadow. And I'm going to be 100 with y'all. I used to be ashamed of my shadow because it was aspects of myself that were deemed by society that were not acceptable. You know? So in the past, I've learned to like dim my light and not be all of me. You know, because I had to fit into a box that I was never meant to fit in. And so I want you all to know that don't try to fit yourself in a box that you were never meant to fit in. You were born to stand out. You were naturally born to stand out. And that's what I had to learn on this journey. So even when you're in the trenches and you're doing the healing, you have to face aspects of you that are not, not so pretty. You got to face parts of you that you've been neglecting and you know it's something that's holding you back you know it's something that's that's keeping you from being your truest and most authentic self you gotta you have to when you're in the trenches you have to actually face the fact that you may have been the problem <laughs> you have to face the fact that you may have been a, the problem in a relation in a past relationship and you have to face that and come to terms with that you can't run from it. As I say all the time, there's nothing outside of you. No one can do anything to you that you do not allow. Everything, unfortunately, that has happened, you know, aside from, you know, certain, like, situations, I don't want to mention, but um, when it comes to women, what they say now, essay, aside from that, I don't mean like that, but what I mean is, like, when dealing with people. People can only take you as far, as far as you allow them to. So there's aspects within you that you have to come to terms with and realize that you may have been the problem. Because at the end of the day, we all, we've all been Scar in someone's story. We all played the role of Scar in someone's story. We were not Mufasa all the time. And that's just not real. And somebody's story, there's a version of you that you were a scar. And we have to accept that about ourselves. And But when you come to terms with that and when you face that aspect, it's great because now you can work on it. Now you can become better. You can self-develop and you can turn that, that shadow aspect into a more productive aspect of you. You can integrate it with your light. And you can recognize it and acknowledge that it's there. But you can self-develop that. So that's a great thing. Someone said, uh, what is a shadow? I'll definitely address that. And then someone said such a word for me today. Give thanks, sister. Thank you. So shadow um, to address, I believe the psychologist, Carl Jung, he coined that term. Your shadow self doing shadow work. So sh your shadow aspects of you are 
who you are behind closed doors at your core like what nobody knows it's like aspects of yourself that you hide from the world so let's just say for example let's just say that you're known as uh being a very nice per a kind person not nice i have my own thoughts on the word nice but you are a kind person you know everyone deems you as kind everyone knows you to be kind let's just say that's that's who you are as a person but your shadow self the word that we're using today your shadow self maybe behind closed doors you are you have anger issues let's just say that let's just say that you're a very angry person behind closed doors but you present yourself to be a very kind person you know a likable person in front in the public so that's what your shadow self is and so so let me talk about the integration of the shadow so you're a kind person right and your shadow self is an ang angry person. So you want to construct that anger into something productive. Anger is not bad. That is a natural emotion. Anger is, is great for you to, to make changes, to go after what you want, to right wrongs, to correct something. You just have to be productive with that anger. So that's just an example of that. So like when you're integrating, let's just say that you become angry now you have you can build your emotional intelligence let's just say someone angers you you can build your emotional intelligence and acknowledge okay right now in this situation i'm angry i acknowledge that i'm angry but i don't have to act on my anger that's what integrating the the light and the shadow is you're welcome you're welcome so yeah so um true healing is done in the dark done done in the trenches it's done in the dark too but true healing is done in the trenches y'all true healing is done in the trenches and we live in a world where we run from ourselves i mentioned this before like maybe a couple of years ago however when the pandemic happened in the beginning like 2020 the world kind of went in a frenzy right which, of course, is natural, it's normal, and it makes sense. I believe everything happens for a reason. When the pandemic happened, if you paid attention, nature started to restore itself. Like when everybody was forced to go inside for a period of time, if you looked outside, you would begin to see the grass getting greener, there were uh, flowers growing that never used to grow. It was so beautiful because people weren't on the road. We, weren't, we didn't have toxins in the air. We didn't have people destroying nature. We didn't have people all over like just destroying the things because we were all forced to stay inside. But the point that I'm trying to make is when the pandemic happened, we were forced to go within and pause and stop. But it was so uncomfortable for us because we were so used to being on the go that we actually had a moment in time where we had to face ourselves. And not only did we have to face ourselves, we had to face the people, if you were living with someone or you know, family or spouse or what have you, you had to face the people that you were living with too. And a lot of people realized that they didn't like themselves. They didn't like the people they were living with. They didn't like the situation, you know, domestic violence went up, skyrocketed during the pandemic. That was a stat that was out there. Uh, divorces skyrocketed. Um, what else? You know, abuse, child abuse skyrocketed, unfortunately, you know, because everyone was forced to stay home and we had to address the ugly truths. We had to address the ugly truths about ourselves and about the people we were around, we were with. But true healing happens in the trenches we were in the trenches the world was in the trenches during the pan the beginning of the pandemic when we were on lockdown and no matter how the situation turned out rather people went their separate ways why rather people actually did the inner work it all was for our highest good everything is always for our highest good because life is happening for us and not to us Life is always happening for us. So I believe that to find a positive in the pandemic, I believe that during the pandemic, 
we had the opportunity for those of us because everyone didn't do the work but what i did see is there was a lot of a lot more people actually leaning towards natural ways of living and being a lot more people were cooking at home a lot of people were learning about herbs a lot of people were trying vegan food a lot of people were uh, finding new hobbies you know so they were learn we were learning aspects of ourselves that were lying dormant or we were discovering aspects of ourselves but all of this is healing you know healing is not always bad you know, all of this was healing because we were actually going within and we were self-developing and finding things about ourselves that and newfound gifts. A lot of people went into business for themselves and skyrocketed, you know, a beautiful thing. A lot of people started painting. A lot of people started, you know, podcasts, whatever. And everyone has some type of transformation. And it's such a beautiful thing for the time that we're in right now. Let's see what y'all saying definitely a period of self-reflection yes is creating our vision in detail yes exactly oh i'm so glad that you said that during this pandemic it gave us the opportunity to reimagine our lives to hone in on our vision to look reevaluate our lives and see where we are so that we can make the necessary changes and create a plan to go where we're going and yes it, it helped us it helped us get focused on on that but again back to the topic true healing is done in the trenches y'all when i tell you you transform in the trenches baby <laughs> you transform in the trenches when um, back to linking this to the fasting process you transform in the trenches but i want to connect it to your goals because again, all month we've been talking about our goals, you know, what we're creating now in all of 2023. True healing is done in the trenches. And you're going to have to face aspects that are uncomfortable. But just like when you're going after your goals, when you're, when you're working towards your goals, excuse me, when you're bringing yourself into alignment with your goals, a lot of healing is going to happen during that process. Things are going to come up about yourself that you didn't even realize. You're going to be tested on this journey. When you're coming into alignment, you're going to realize your shortcomings and your weak weaknesses. But you're also going to realize your strengths. And you're going to learn how to develop that within yourself. But you will be tested. You know? And you, you'll have to continue to move through the trenches. Continue to do the work and continue to heal. I've certainly learned that for sure for myself. I heard this saying before that, uh, yes, definitely so. I heard this saying before where it said, uh, in entrepreneurship, it said, entrepreneurship is disguised as uh, self-development or something like that. Is a, is a cashmere sweater to self-development or what have you. I can't remember that. But it, essentially, it's entrepreneurship is disguised as self-development because that's, that's the truth, y'all. And I'm speaking for myself, you know, as me being an entrepreneur. Man, you will find out a lot about yourself. You will find a lot about people in your life by going on a journey of entrepreneurship, okay? And you'll realize, like, the, the wounded aspects of yourself. And you'll realize that, oh, wow, like you can see yourself clearly. You can see your life clearly when you're in the trenches, because when you are bare, when you have no distractions, you have nothing to distract you. And all you have is yourself and you have to sit with yourself and you got to allow it to come up. And it could be scary too, y'all. It could be real scary when you're in those trenches, when you're all alone in those trenches and there's nobody to call, but nobody to face but yourself. And I, I know why. And I see why people are afraid. I see why they're afraid to face themselves. But I want you to know that you have to go through the dark in order to find the light. You have to. You have to. You got to go through the dark to find the light. And when you find the light, you integrate the darkness and the lightness. And that's where your true power comes from. That's where your whole self comes from. And now you can show up as who you are and who you are destined to be. 
And now you can move forward towards those goals with power and purpose, with strength and courage at the soul level because you did the healing in the trenches. You did the healing in the darkness. You faced your shadows in the trenches because true healing is done in the trenches. So that's all that I have for y'all today. Thank y'all for joining. Again, happy Kwanzaa. Oh, wait, before y'all go. Um, our last classes are this week. So Wednesday will be the meditation class at 5 p.m. And Saturday is uh, our last yoga class, comedic yoga class at 10 a.m. So make sure that y'all click the link in the bio to sign up for the classes. Yes, thank you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for joining. I really do appreciate y'all. Uh, make sure that y'all sign up for the classes this week. This is the last class for 2022. I'm super excited, y'all. It's been a year, and I'm just so grateful. I'm just so grateful. So, yes, make sure that y'all check us out tomorrow. We're going live every day now until uh, January 1st. You know, just, again, spreading good li Good. Li Why do I keep saying lives? Good lives good lives you know but uh, spreading good vibes love and light we're uh, shifting our mindsets changing habits about ourselves and we are doing the self-development growth now we're not waiting for january 1st to make changes we are making our changes right now because true change starts today not tomorrow and that's what we're all about here at community yoga so thank y'all so much for joining i hope that y'all have a phenomenal rest of your evening and a great rest of your week. TTYF.